Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Gaming in the Max and part two of our Hearts of Iron 4 Kaiserreich, the German Empire playthrough. So, in the last episode, uh, we have pretty much faced the Black Monday market crash and we've started on our rebuilding of our economy with the, the card game. Um, we've set our army up and our productions up to be ready, hopefully, for what's to come. Uh, on top of that, we are now uh, fighting over here in East Asia to try to save the Nanjing clique from uh, falling from the Anqing, the Shengqing Tingo, and the uh, Minggang insurgency. So we've got four units over here fighting right now, and that's what we'll start out at is fighting over here. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Should break this unit here soon and then I'm just gonna loop around and maybe loop around here as well all right the verdict this was from the court case of mr. Kenyatta years of legal battle have come to an end earlier today with the litigation of Jomo Kenyatta ending at the highest court of Germany while the kick Q lawyer has skillfully defended his points the defense was represented by a renowned political theorist Carl Schmidt the jurist pronounced a novel defense that has established a new legal precedent the Schutz Troop Command has allegedly acted in the interest of the state by taking the necessary steps to ensure the integrity of our empire in the state of exception. The finer details of Schmidt case were largely based on an essay on political theology, which gave birth to the phrase, Sovereign is he who decides on the exception. Whether Schmidt intended this or not, the phrase has become a catchphrase for the supporters of a more hardline approach to our colonial governments. Our governance. What is this nonsense? They pushed those units there. There's a famine that broke out in Sichuan. This year keeps getting worse. I actually don't remember which tile. Sichuan. Let's see. Shish. I wonder if it even is a tile. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Oh, it's actually the country, my big, my dumb self. <laughs> yes, they have a famine going on. All right, with this. Not that we're going to encircle anybody this way, but let's get radios researching. Form additional East Asian regiments. And um, we can do an alliance with Burma. No. That helped world tension a little bit. Let's do the let's finish out the Prisits plan here. And then we should see what else comes about. I'm trying to knock out the and queen clicking. No, push you there. Alright, so there's no majority in the 1936 election. As predicted by quite a few during the campaign, no majority has been found in the Reichstag after the elections in 1936. A majority is impossible without the, without the participation of either the SPD or the DVLP. Two, far, two parties on different ends of the political spectrum, either of which would need time to dismantle the old consensus and craft a new coalition in the legislature. However, there is no time for the Reichstag to bicker among themselves until they finally form a government. With each passing day, the economic situation grows worse and the faith of the people falters further. When the parliamentarians cannot lead, the duty to make a decision falls to the Kaiser Wilhelm II. Even after the March Constitution, his role in the formation of governments remains defiant and are definite. And whenever there is no obvious majority in the Reichstag, he has seen fit to appoint compromise choices like Brockendorf or loyalists to the court like Dirksen. Though Crown Prince Wilhelm the Kaiser was recommended an interesting choice, Kurt von Schleichler, the current Minister of War of Prussia. Ever since Leo von Caprivi's resignation in 1894, Wilhelm II has been reluctant to appoint military candidates to the office. 
and the parliamentarians would hardly wish to see a uniformed man command the empire either as it brings back some memories of Hindenburg and Ludendorff's plotting during the Weltkrieg. However, Schlichler's offer several valuable qualities as well. During the past two decades, he has nurtured, has nurtured the image of a moderate who works well with the Reichstag, has ties and connections across political spectrums, and is noted supporter of trade unions such as the ADGB, earning him the moniker the Red General. At a time of national unity is necessi- necessary, all of these qualities are crucial. Finally, he is a close friend of the Crown Prince, who is a major influence on his aged father and eventually got him appointed the new Reich Chancellor. Welcome, Reich's Chancellor Schleichler. We gain plus two stability. We remove March leads to April. We appoint Kurt von Schleichler to the uh, position of Reich's Chancellor. He gives us plus 15% political power, 10% consumer good factory factor, 5% division recovery rate, and production efficiency negative 5%. Uh, Cabinet Schleichler becomes the ruling parter, par- party. Um, it seems he's been appointed, however, it seems unlikely that he can stay for long. Now we got Cabinet Schleichler. Kurt von Schleichler is appointed at Reich Chancellor. We hope he does well. Uh, not really, but we have to do these two right here, and then we can further our, uh, our plans. So come back over here to Nanjing. Tingo beat us out so matters of national stability in his first speech before the Reichstag Reichs Chancellor Schleichler announced that the first and biggest priority of the government will be to contain the economic crisis caused by Black Monday market crash this end he spoke out against orthodox economics and their agendas by stating that the most crucial step to take is a war against unemployment stability and the financial markets management of imperial debt they are all important but they cannot be more important than the millions of yearning masses thrown out of their jobs during the course of the past few months Job creation and the war of unemployment, those were the slogans of the hour, popular with the people who demand quick resolutions or quick solutions to their economic, personal economic issues. Already, the new Reich's Chancellor has been in contact with like-minded officials such as Fritz Tarnow and Fritz Bod, who have been developing an employment-based recovery plan with the aid of the ADGB Trade Union Confederation, or potentially even the famous Welter von Rathenau, or Rathenau, who has been, developed a complex scheme for full reform of the German economy along state control lines during the Weltkrieg. However, this was not controversial event was not the controversial event of the day. With the Reich Chancellor backing the first law of the cabinet was proposed in the same session, amending the procedures for votes of no confidence established by the March reforms, which were described vaguely in the Constitution itself and thus clarified in ordinary Reichstag bills, citing the necessity for the cabinet stability under the fractured nature of the current Reichstag. Schleichler pushed for a system of constructive no confidence votes, a no confidence vote on the government may only be voted for and passed. If a replacement candidate for the Reich Chancellor is proposed by the same people, thus proposed replacement candidates is then recommended to the Kaiser, though he still has full power to choose whoever he wants. This has delayed any confidence, no confidence votes towards Schleichler by making sure that the SPD and the DVLP cannot just band together and remove whoever they wish, though it does not mean that they have given up just yet. The par- parliamentary parties now just need to build a critical mass in the Reichstag to push through their choice. This is rather unorthodox, gain plus two stability, Change of popularity of authoritarian democracy plus 3%. With complete focus, die arbitrage and constructive no confidence principle. Um, and then the battle for the chancellorship of Kurt von Schleicher begins. See the decision chab for further instructions. <laughs> Finish those two. And now we come over to here um, underneath our Black Monday uh, trade card game. There we have the cabinet Schleicher. These are the two political parties right now, the coalition of the Black, White, and Red, and the Democratic Union, or Democratic Union. The Democratic Union hold 137 seats out of the 223 needed, and the 
black, white, and red coalition hold 92 out of 223. So how you do this is you get three choices per turn. Uh, each turn is, I believe, yeah, 30 days. And with that, you can come down here and you can see that the Democratic Union is targeting the LVP left, the minority bloc, and the Zentrium left. Um, and what you can do, if depending on who you want to win, I want the coalition to win. So the DKP and the Zentrium right over who they are going after right now. So if you come up here and you say like the LVP left, right? And you click on them, that means the Democratic Union will be unsuccessful in targeting them to join their coalition to get the 223 seats. So we'll choose them, the minority block, and I think it's what, the Zentrium left and the Zentrium left. That means that the Democratic Union will be unsuccessful on all of their targeted um, parties here for the Reichstag. So that's what we'll be going to. We're going to try to get the coalition to win, um, but that is a part of it. So let's check really quick. We're at 51% towards capitulation. Choosing the vice chancellor, officially known as the general Dep deputy to the Reich's chancellor, the vice chancellor may be appointed at the request of the Reich's chancellor. He's able to fulfill the duties of the Reich's chancellor and countersign imperial orders and decrees in the Reich chancellor's stead, and generally holds considerable influence in the collegial federal government. Traditionally, the vice chancellor also serves as the secretary of the interior, although this is not an ironclad rule. During the coalition governments in the empire, the vice chancellor is ge given, generally given to the most important coalition partner. Of the Reich Chancellor for Schleichler, this is an issue as he is an outsider of the Reichstag and seeks to work beyond the partisan barrier, but is also given an opportunity by technically appointing a delegate of a bothersome ideological wing. He can say, 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 say them, yeah, <laughs> and spend the time furthering his agenda. His agenda, an independent, nonpartisan, yet generally conservative official, since as Tilo von Vilminski would be seen as an active trust by conservatives in the Reichstag. On the other hand, a member of the right wing of the SPD, such as August Vining, would ensure the Schleicher's government reforms is its pretense as the Red General's government and grant some assurances to the SPD. Alternatively, it is possible to simply leave the office of Vice Chancellor vacant. This will forgo opportunities for building cross connections and will consolidate even more power in the hands of the Reich Chancellor. What would be Schleicher's decision? Um, this gives us less stability, more war support, and it lets us flag one additional faction. It will affect the direction of your regime as its perception among the people. Or you can freeze the coalition from any actions in the Reichstag this turn, or you can freeze the SPD. Um, we already have froze the SPD, but we'll do that again. And the only reason we're going to is I don't want to lose any more stability. We're at negative 24 as it already is. So the SPD is completely blocked out right now. Come back over here. Need to beat those militia units out of the mountains there. And then move them over here to try to push into the uh, Chen Qing Tengao. Uh, Prussia and the Reich Chancellor. For the last few decades after the formation of the German Empire, the Reich Chancellor and the Minister President of Prussia were the same person uh, and were considered to be the same position by many in the practice, or in many in practice. This was because the Emperor, as King of Prussia, generally preferred to keep the two positions consolidated and it was perpetuated Prussian dominance over the Empire. The state of affairs changed after the Weltkrieg for two reasons. First, the March reforms of the Constitution introduced a vote of no confidence in the Reich Chancellor, allowing the Reichstag to control him and possibly remove him, which implicitly meant that the Reichstag could now remove a Prussian minister president. The second is Matthias Erzberg, a liberal Southern Catholic, becoming Reich Chancellor in 1921, which infuriated the Prussian House of Representatives. After being petitioned to do something by the Prussian legislators, Wilhelm II ultimately acceded and appointed Bill Drews as the first independent Prussian minister president. Since then, an uneasy system of dual rule has formed in the empire. Prussia controls 70% of the empire's population and territory, 
and as it now has its own government, cooperation between it and the federal government, or lack therefore or thereof, can re- rescue or bury a Reich Chancellor. However, attention within the grand within the Prussian Grand Coalition grows. Reich Chancellor Schleichler has spoken out against this system. In this critical moment, the empire must have one head, not two. It needs to consolidate its resources. Being a respected official from Prussia, Schleichler has the potential to become the first Reich Chancellor to also be Prussian Minister President in over a decade. This will put Prussia's resources, influence, and law enforcement under direct control for better or worse. His decisions will be to uh, trust Roderin, his political veteran. If I can take and Queen there, I can knock them out of the war. That'll be a big boon. Uh, Georgia has severed the last of, of its ties with Middle Europa today. So we've got traitors. I wonder why. Oh, because they're social democrats. That's why. Rising worker militancy. It's been anticipated ever since fr- uh, February market crash, but it has now come clear the breakdown of German economy. Ec- Economy has greatly bolstered the far left of the political spectrum. Socialist propaganda has swept up thousands of workers across the nation, offered an easy answer to the confusion of many workers thrown out of their jobs because of factories that they cannot control. It is because of the illusion of prosperity that the Brigoys, the Junkers, and the Kaiser at the top maintain has shattered the final house of international capitalism at hand, so make sure to stand in line and hoist the red flag. The German far left parties are generally small and fractured, and though they are not banned, they are only somewhat tolerated by the political establishment. After years of splits and reunions, the Communist Workers' Party of Germany, or the KAPD, have garnered most of the socialist share. Though supportive of the French-style syndicalism, the KAPD holds some reservations, believing that trade unions in Germany have become hopelessly hopelessly reformist, and so the revolutionary vanguard must be factory councils of workers, hence the Council Communism. The Communist Party of Germany, the KPD, is also prominent, distinguished by the fact that they participate in electoral politics unlike their cousins. In spite of the bad blood between the numerous factions of the far left, they find the strength to cooperate from time to time, and today is one of those cases. The, KP, the KAPD, the KPD, and their aligned trade unions are planning a mass protest in Berlin on International Workers' Day, May 1st, and expect to be joined by similar events in the Rhineland and Sac- Saxony. This is not good. Change the popularity of syndicalism, plus 1%. Gain base stability, negative 2%. Ouch. We should finish with the prison's plan in a week. Then we'll move over to do other parts of our focus. Alright, well we broke them units there. Legation cities voting for a bailout. Black money has left deep scars in the global economy, and particularly on the Deutsche Ostisch Bank in Shanghai, which seems to have fallen victim to unscrupulous business practice, practices and possibly insider trading. Our delegations are now seeking the guidance on how they should vote concerning the proposed bailout of the DAB. We'll approve it. The Forest Brother Uprising, the per- paralysis of the central government in Riga, and the economic crash has given Latvian and Estonian partisans in the United Baltic Duchy an opportunity to rebel against the Duchies. Uh, Livland has suffered the brunt of the developing rebellion, and the land administrators have reported that they cannot control the countryside as law enforcement agencies have been overridden by ad hoc partisan organizations and underground resistance groups. Supported by local farmers and defectors from the Duchies' armies, these so-called Forest Brothers are wreaking havoc and seeking to completely overthrow German, German rule in the Baltic. Riga has requested we send an attachment of temporary military police force to the Duchies to help them in their fight against the Baltic separatists. Should the Duchies collapse, it would be disastrous not only for German pride and standing in Europe, but also our defensive plan against Russia. Uh, it's a national security matter. Nothing is too costly. We ensure the Duchy survives, but we lose 70 political power. Well, we have to do that. We cannot lose one of our Duchies there, or our, one of our allies there against Russia. down because I'm going to force him into this mountain tile to fight. I tank against these guys. Uh, the U.S. accepts the Prizwitz plans, so we get pleased by us. I would love to do the German-American self-defense associations, but I'm going to do the man in the high castle. 
which uh, gives us popular change of popularity of authoritarian democracy plus ten percent. And alliances formed through this focus bench may be used with later, but it gives us the Kant's Chancellor and the Radio. yet. No, you're at 33% capitulation. And uh, they're at 55% capitulation. Blut my in growing response or, I'm sorry, in response to growing militancy of German workers and citing previous sporadic cases of violence during the electoral campaign, the police force of Berlin issued a ban on open-air political gatherings in the city during May 1st, aiming to prevent the planned May Day demonstrations. This did not deter the far-left activists, however, and even embold some, emboldened some. These restrictions appeared to affirm the official party lines of the KP KAPD that capitalism has entered its third period and so will respond to workers' movements within more and more draconian force. Demonstrators took place, or demonstrations took place across the city. Rough tallies of the numbers show that the threat of police violence balanced out the growing socialist membership, meaning that the size of the KAPD and KPD gatherings were hardly larger than normal. Still, Berlin police responded with force, sending out flying squads and attacking with truncheons wherever demonstrations were reported. Even lawful conventions such as SPD and liberal trade union assemblies were mistaken for socialist protests and attacked. Street combat broke out in the socialist-dominated vetting district, but it was one-sided and only served to escalate police response. Live rounds were fired upon K. KAPD demonstrators and over 30 people were killed by the end of the day. Around 200 were injured and 1,200 were arrested by the police. Contribution of Cumin Stache Arbiter Zumtung were curtailed in the aftermath to suppress a casualty member, but the message spread across the nation nonetheless and further inflamed friction between the government and the labor movement. The events were largely viewed positively by the right wing of the Reichstag, while the liberals and the SPD were more divided, in particular while the SPD newspaper Vorwarts. Uh, produced a scathing piece stating that the KAPD was seeking to intentionally sacrifice supporters' lives. The Social Democratic delegation of the Reichstag officially protested the actions of the Berlin policemen and demanded an investigation. Their demands fell on deaf ears, however, while tensions continued to rise. Gain negative 2% stability, lose 30 manpower, change the popularity of syndicalism, and the economic decline score of the crisis is raised by 250 points. So now uh, we have to have 3,000 for our investment and 3,000 for our stability. Um, let us first pull two cards, which gives us capital control and the RAF AUA employment program, where we have a labor crisis that gives us 2,200 uh, or 2,250 stability and 1,125 investment. Then let's change the crisis. And that gives us 3,000 stability and 750 in investment. So our investment's not high enough. We can establish price monitoring, which gives us more political power gain and more stability. It adds 3% to our debt. All relief cards dealt will be 25% more stability, which we don't technically need this turn. Uh, and this will put us over the 3,000. So we might wait on the established price monitoring for the next turn. The vote passes.
The Greeks seized German assets thanks to the rippling of flag of Black Monday. German investors who held majority shares in Greek factories and mines have been closing those businesses down, in some cases because they're unprofitable, but in others because the investors have gone bankrupt. The Greek government has responded by seizing the companies despite the Treaty of Salonika signed after the war stipulating that our investors have unfettered access to their economy. Many in the government have suggested we harshly res or respond harshly, not only apply sanctions, but pull all investments out of Greece altogether. Others say the country is only trying to stay afloat. Black Monday has hit us uh, hard, has hit all of us hard. So if I choose to leave them alone, we're all trying to cope. We can peacefully include them into the Reich's pack later on, which I feel would be much more beneficial than having to go to war, overthrow them, and then then force them to be part of us if we can just get them to align to begin with. So we'll just leave them alone. Uh, the last In the last series, we sanctioned them fully. They joined the uh, Russian Moscow Accord, and they put the entirety of the uh, Baltics against us, which are, or Balkans, I apologize, the entirety of the Balkans against us. Uh, if we can have an ally in Greece, which would be pretty beneficial in my opinion. The fall of the Eastern Railway, the Polish Railway Network managed by the KKWIP, is largely owned by a German subsidiary of the KPUGHSTE, a Prussian government railway company. This arrangement has secured German oversights over a vital transportation route to the Ausstatten, but also required considerable funding to keep the route operable for military and military major military developments to the east. With a dramatic reduction, reduced need for traffic and cuts to the KPUGHSTE's budget, the railway fate is now uncertain. With thousands of railway workers unemployed, the Polish government is under tremendous pressure to buy the corporation out from Prussian hands. This would result this would result the Poles taking care of the little financial losses, but our military question how safe it would be to entrust the Poles with ownership of the most vital route in Middle Europe Middle Europa. We have bigger issues. We we lose ten percent uh, of our influence in Poland, or we can lose 15 political power and we bail it out. So save it. It is a matter of national security. I would like to look and see. That has seven days. Come down here. It's a minor defeat in Poland. Even though we have the pol uh, pro monarchy going. So. About to beat and cling there. Yep, there they go. Awesome. And now, move these troops north. They've got all their troops up here, so if I take some some Zao there, all their troops are going to be positioned in the north, hopefully. We've got the machine converter researched. Um, Let's research maintenance companies, maybe. Oh, let's do better artillery. And our Mausers will do soft attack and reliability. Let's check on you guys. It's 40%. Oh, yeah. It's 40% towards capitulation. So, we still got a little bit. I want you to immediately take some pal there. Actually, doubt that they can roll all the way up like that, but we'll see if we can. Circle those units there. Uh, we've got Mother's Day. Ever since the U.S. Congress designated the second Sunday of May as Mother's Day in 1914, as a sign of love and reverence of, for the mothers of the world, this American tradition has slowly gained traction across the Atlantic. After the end of the Weltkrieg, the Association of German Flower Shop Owners took advantage of this as a marketing tactic for uh, promoting the date to raise flower sales in May. This 
liturgical emphasis of the original version of the holiday also earned the support of religious conservative groups who considered it a viable alternative to the International Women's Day instituted initiated by socialist organization movements or organizations. Movements calling for making it an official holiday earned traction in the German Empire in the 1920s and 30s. Alongside business owners, conservative societies, and women's rights activists, the campaign in Germany was also endorsed by the Volkschist group who can connected the idea of Mother's Day with the far-right idea of a loyal child-bearing mother who is the future of the Germanic master race. The appointment of the Kurt von Schleichler, a patriotic national, nationalist Reich Chancellor who nevertheless displays a progressive streak, has uplifted the hopes of the activist campaign, and numerous letters have reached Berlin requesting him to finally make Mother's Day a national holiday. The Empire has seen better days, but perhaps a small propaganda victory will cause no harm. If we choose to do that, uh, let future generations know that Schleicher respected women more than anyone else. We gain one stability and change the popularity of authoritarian democracy plus 2%, or we can gain just two stability. I will take the one stability and authoritarian democracy plus 2%. All right. Give me a drink real quick. Um, the coalition has 130 seats, and the Democratic Union holds 137 seats. Will block them from getting the LVP left, the Zentrium left, and the minor. Is it the minor block? Yeah, the minor block. The coalition is going after the DKP, the Goof uh, Party, and the Zentrium Center since they already have the Zentrium right. We're about done with the man in the high castle. Back over here. tank should be able to hold out there on the account that they have nothing to pierce it with. Yep, cannot do, pierce it so they only do 50% damage to it. Oh, they don't have much fuel right now, that's probably why they're going so slow. Done with man in the high castle, the chancellor and the radio. The months leading up to the 1936 elections did not give the German populace a good image of their government. Divided, fighting over petty conflicts and ignorant of the needs of the people. They appear complicit in the financial collapse in February. Recovery from the financial crisis requires for the government to regain the people's trust, both to ensure that the mass of unemployment and impoverished do not resort to radical ends and also to sway the Reichstag by displaying the Reichschancellor's personal popularity. Kurt von Schleicher, though more of a tech technician of politics that a public face took upon the task. The office of the Reich Chancellor established a program of weekly radio talks during which the Reich Chancellor explained his plans for economic recovery, the policies he intends to prevent before the Reichstag for a vote, and how they may benefit the German people. During the radio talks he invoked a comparison between Germany between German Germany's current bereaved state with the condition of Prussia in the first half of the eighteenth century, and compared his vision with the policy of a more moderate Frederick Wilhelm I for national recovery. Much like the king concentrated on domestic reorganization and avoided conflict during his long reign, so too Schleichler intends to focus patient, patiently on domestic problems. Much like he has attended to economic development and granted privileges to productive workers, so will his government encourage a streamlining of the economy and offer the, mo mo offer the most far-reaching satisfaction of the legitimate desires of the entire working class. This unprecedented move unprecedented move of personal connection between the Reich Chancellor and the German people was a success. Hundreds of thousands across Germany turned out to listen to the radio talks, and the contents of Schleicher's speeches were considered co co consistently com commented and discussed throughout the press. He has a way with words, gained 10% stability, and political power plus 25%. We can do proud centrium to enforce party discipline, or prod, prod. They'll be protected. Well, we we should wait then. Um, done the man in the high castle. That's twenty eight days. They'll help renegotiate our debt. It's twenty eight days. We can try to. We can get Roth, Walter von Rothenau, which gives us production efficiency, gross factory output, and then start working down his tree. Gives us a bunch of civilian factories. 
Uh, let's see. I don't want to go their plan. I'd much rather go... Uh, with uh, Wrath of News plan. This will help with infrastructure injecting capital will aid in recovery from the economic crisis that's 28 days. That removes a bunch of debt scores as well. That one as well. Oh, so you can that's that's pretty good actually let's revive the Rotha new plan the legation council votes for aiding or providing aid to the Shishuan province yeah we'll prove that so they're no longer having major famine going on basic machine tools let's do uh, dispersed industry one. All right. All right. The Minion of Canada and Afghanistan ended their hostilities. My trucks are moving so slow. Maybe it's because it's mountains, but I think it's because they don't have enough uh, fuel. Let's get these tanks around. Oh, I don't think I got them in time. No, I didn't. Manuel Carles assumes full control of Argentina. Uh, will the stability? Will this stabilize Argentina? I think they're yeah, their infantry forces are way faster than my. Motorized forces up here. Leadership changes in the center. Times could definitely be better for the Zentrian Party, the main representation of Catholic interest in German parliamentary politics. After many years of aimless leadership under the moderate Rhenish wing, two mediocre election results in 31 and 36, and the collapse of several government cabinets with Zentrian participation over the course of the last few years, Zentrian Chairman Theodore von Guren has officially announced his retreat from the leadership of his party. A, a party conference, the first in many years, is due to be called in the near future, and politically interested observers are convinced that it will be one of the fiercest party internal confrontations. Throughout the last decade, new factions within Germany's oldest political party have sprung up like mushrooms and are willing to seize power and lead the party onto a new political course. But the question will be what political wing will come out on top? Who will lead the Catholic juggernaut next? While the Zentrium remains in a succession crisis, no Zentrium factions can be protected from targeting attempts by opposition coalitions. Without clear leadership, the Zentrum parliamentarians can ignore the party whips and freely negotiate with the SPD or the far right for a better deal. We've got the Zentrum right right now for the uh, black, white, and right, black, white, and red coalition. So we shall see. Zhang is driven from Jinan, so we did take the capital. Other capital is Yantai, but they've hit 100% capitulation, so they're gone. All right, now we can move our forces to the south. Let's say probably like right here. And just aim. Really, we need to aim for there. And you all have uh, the glory of taking and Queen, so congratulations. The vote passes to help Shishuan, so I don't know if that just helps with the a little bit of the major and there's no airports I can actually reach do my fighters have a better range no nope, just about the same range we'll rush these troops down all their troops are now moving south too so they're freed up Wait for our guys to, uh, uh, Yuval, or Il, 
Yeah, Yavald von Kleitz Schimmensen attacks Schleichler. A scathing criticism of the Reich's Chancellor has been delivered to national newspapers by Yavald von Kleitz Schimmensen, the Ober President of Pomerania. From his offices in Stettin, he has announced Schleichler's lack of principles and heartless pragmatism, which will bring no new vision to the German Empire, merely a mockery, mockery cobbled up from a hundred competing ideas to him. The Reich Chancellor is a liberalist tactician, unprecedented unprincipled opportunist a grenadin one day he acts as nearly a syndicalist before trade unions in the rhineland another day he announces those same ideas as he plots with business owners and puppet bureaucrats such a man can never re reinvigorate the german nation merely drag it down deeper with words of this rising star among german conservatives to travel far a well-connected east elbian aristocrat and a leader of the pomeranian agrarian movement Kleis Schimmensen represented a new junker generation and has already been considered by conservatives as a political candidate or a potential candidate for the Prussian minister president or even Reich's chancellor. His sentiments towards Schleichler are shared by the DKP in particular, who have chosen this week to finally announce their electoral alliance with the DVLP will continue in the Reichstag as well. It's easy for him to attack from his comfy office in Stettin, or his, his yeah, comfy Stettin office, gain negative two stability, negative 25 political power, and the DKP in faction in the Reichstag will join the coalition. That puts the coalition at 180 seats with the DKP. If they get the Centrium Center, that pushes them 29 more. And if they get the Goof Party, it's only 5, and the Agrarian Party is only 2. So it won't be enough in the next 10 days. Uh, let's see. We're reviving the Rothano plan. Even though it's more of the SPD, the other plan is much more liked by uh, the Red General, so might as well do what the Red General does not like. Uh, I actually want you to move this way. I guess my tanks are still way up there. Oh, he's right here. Uh, if we could cut into there, we could probably knock out those French units there. Might be able to save them from losing. Krill the first is Crown Tsar of Russia. After the downfall and death of the former president, Boris Samakov. Russia has once again been left in the power vacuum now that has come to an end as a coalition of conservative, monarchist, nationalists, and everything in between, headed by General Pyotr Wrangel and politician Dmitry Romanov, have claimed calm the crisis and, what's more fitting, the helm of this new regime than the heir to the Romanov family himself, Krill I. Czar of all Russians. Grand Duke Krill Vladimirovich, now Krill I of Russia, is, now, is one of the most troublesome members of the House of Romanov. After the execution of Nicholas and his family, Krill claimed his rule over the scattered house of Romanov, a claim which is hotly contested by the rest of the family, who claimed that Krill had no right to be to a restored Russian throne, nor to lead the Russian royal family. <laughs> so, uh, they don't too much like him. What I got from that. Tanks are moving over here. The Democratic Coalition in Algiers. Following the surprise retirement of Marshal Philip Pitton, leader of the thinly veiled military junta for the last decade, and the election of Gen General Henry Mordock as head of state, the new president has restored much of the civil liberties suspended under Pitton and chosen to trust until now rather marginalized democratic forces of the exiled republic to form a unity government, a new sacred union himself choosing to take a more ceremonial role. And the social conservatives are in charge. Haitian President Ely Lescott asked for support with the Haitian Civil War raging between incumbent President uh, Ely Lescott and challenger Demothenstein Kalexti. He has asked for our support. In exchange, they promised Germany will gain a friendly port in the Caribbean and be able to expand their influence in America. Was originally a pharmacist in Port de Pox in the north of the country, representing the interest of the 
mulatto elite. He has entered politics with the Vets Creek and then took on several posts in the government. He, however, never relinquished his independence and made alliances only out of pure interest, confirmed by his favorable standing among Americans and the Germans. Lescott was able to take power following the fall of President Calixti. Now, plans to bring liberal and democratic forms to Haiti. All right, we'll back him. I don't think that really does anything for us, either way. Compensation for the Pervichian Osteban. number of major businesses in Ukraine have come together and state-sponsored plan to buy the majority shares of the Prussian Eastern Railways, a subsidiary of the Prussian State Railway Company, which operates the majority of railways in Ukraine. This is trying to action transaction the ownership of the railway is transferred to the ukrainian railway corporation and admittedly still with a sizable portion of german private ownership hands us 50 political power so now we're only at negative 94. fall of the Roderinan cabinet and the incumbent nonpartisan government in Russia, led by Minister President Sigfrid von Roderin, has not endured the aftermath of the economic crisis. The elections in 1936 have driven tensions between the members of the Roderinan coalition as well. The Prussians, DVLP, DKP, Zentrium, and LVP witnessed a change of demeanor in their federal counterparts and thus began drifting themselves. After a failed vote on government subsidies to Cilician coal industries, which were blasted by the DVLP as a ridiculous support of sycophants and Jews, Roderin chose to resign due to the legislators lack of confidence in the cabinet film the second is king of prussia accepted the recommendation of the house of lords and appointed adolf torchovitz von bechtofi fribe as the next minister president president of prussia a relatively pragmatic east prussian aristocrat of lithuanian roots bataki earned notori notoriety for his leadership of the imperial nutrition's office during the Weltkrieg. news outlets believe that he will seek to maintain rodrin's coalition of the center and right and retain most of the incumbent ministers seems like a superficial change we appoint Adolf von Batoki Freebie with the effects monthly population plus 10%, recruitable population plus 5%, and a change in popularity of paternal autocracy and social democracy plus 2, respectively. All right. I uh, like that. I think we can swing around and destroy them. Yep. Right down here. March down here. Riga is under martial law months after the outbreak of armed rebellion in the United Baltic Duchy. Its civilian government has become a casualty early today. Units of the Ballastic Landsworth moved into Riga and forcibly dissolved the Lantag. The Lanzwer is believed to have viewed the Duchy's liberal government as too focused on the ongoing role with conservative opposition. The coup being an effort to direct resources against the uh, Forrest brothers with Duke Adolf Friedrich conspicu conspicuously missing the frame. German General Rudiger von der Goltz has emerged as the face of the ultra-reactionary government. Rumors suggest that these developments have been driven by the Baltic Brotherhood, a secret society that desires a more radical transition for the du uh, Duchy. War is not a time for formalities. So now we have a Puppet for her. So there you go. Not necessarily great, but not necessarily horrible. As long as they don't uh, hate us. Don't think they do, so. And unify the church. Do what? Abolish the old system. Hmm. <laughs> I'd much rather they go with the professionalism, but it's okay. Alright, let's see. This time around, knock on wood, Finland has not fallen yet, so... Russia still doesn't hate us either. We've revived the Rothenu, uh Which we can reform card, work creation card... 
gives us better factory output or two civilian factories and a military factory I do like that um, let's see what about the Zentrium Zentrium right but not the center you're going after the LVP left so block that minority block and the Zentrium left can't block the Zentrium left but we can block um, the minority block, right? Yeah. That. Let's do the German Self Defense Associations for America. It's 21 days. We might have to cancel it. We might not. The Zentrium Party Conference uh, nominates Stuggerwald. This week, Zentrium convenes its party conference in the city of Essen in the heart of the Ruhr, known a hotbed of the powerful Christian trade union movement. Quite fittingly, the board has already nominated a candidate that comes from a trade union background and who, according to observers, has an undeniably high chance of winning, Adam Stuggerwald, the most influential representative of the party labor wing for several decades, and since recently the leader of the Zentrium par Parliamentary Faction, the Reichstag. However, while Stuggerwald enjoys enormous influence and sway within Zentrium's party board, parliamentary factions, and among the Christian trade unions he is viewed with skepticism by the church, Catholic interest groups, and the middle class organizations who fear that Stuggerwald might be too decisive and not a proper leading figure as one of the empire's most diverse parties. His opponents perceive him as a power hungry and anti clerical, and his questionable support of Reich Chancellor's Schleichler's queer front concept has made him many enemies. Thus, many Zentrum delegates at the conference loudly demand that Stuggerwald should only be able to run for chairman under one condition he has to resign as parliamentary leader in the Reichstag. Will the trade union and behemoth negotiate with his opponents under these? If uh, he negotiates, this will soothe their concerns over a slasher-backed faction taking over, but the Catholic trade unions see themselves as natural leaders, and will they take this surrender well? Well, he offers to negotiate. Let's see what we can get from that. We didn't do that last time, and I almost missed my uh, Black Monday trading card game. <laughs> uh We can get assistance from the Eastern Reichs Pack. That adds two debt. Let's add three debt because we don't have a choice. Um, we can change the crisis. That's an inflation crisis that doesn't help. Let's do assistance and let's do work creation. So we need probably two cards from both. Hopefully we can get another card. Cooperate with business. I'll draw two more cards. Capital control. But I need investment. Man, I'm going to drive the debt up crazy. Stability I'm fine with. Let's do that. And money issue. All right. We're good there. We're at 129% of the debt. So after this, we will have to go over to debt negotiation. Attack of the unions. To the surprise of many, Stuggerwald has proven himself willing to make concessions to his party internal opponents. However, a harsh protest of the United Federation of Christian Trade Unions and the Trade Union Alliance representatives in the Zentrum Party Board has put an end to these negotiations before they could even start. In their eyes, the broad opposition against Stegerwald's leading role within the party is nothing less than a serious affront to the German working class. Thus, the trade unions have announced to refuse any kind of future cooperation as long as the demands of the Christian working class remain unheard. Stegerwald himself has also been harshly criticized by some of his associates for being too weak are being weak enough to even consider negotiating with his enemies in the first place. The situation that from Stargevald and the party itself is looking increasingly dire. To mediate between the entrenched front, the less anti-clerical and inter-confessional Catholic working associations have agreed to broker a compromise. They claim that the skepticism towards Stargevald is not an affront to the working class, but a natural reaction to Stargevald's power-hungry behavior. As a solution, they advocate for the establishment of a compro uh, compromised Trump variant leadership consisting of Stargevald, their own candidate, Joseph Joes, and the moderate Renate party leader, Hugo Moning. Such a constellation would leave Stegerval in charge of a parliamentary faction, but drastically weaken his influence within the party. 
article, former Trivariant with the modern unionist and moderate parl parliamentarian Mungin. Centrum has never had a Trivariant leadership before, and there are always fears that this will, now res will not resolve the par problem of the party's weakness. Or he drops his cannon and this leaves it wide open. Let's accept the Trivariant, Variant, because I think if you choose that, then they cannot um, rally either direction against one party or the other, so... We'll see, though. Wow, the Trump variant is rejected, even though Sturgeval accepted the counter proposal of the Catholic Working Association has proven himself willing to join a tri variant with Joe Simonian. The plan has been shot down by the front of a younger delegates before it could even properly initiated. Multiple reasons are named against it. Among them is that a tri variant would conflict with the traditions of the party, which always been has been led by one party, one leader, and not several, and the fact that a multi member leadership would continue to suffer from the unassertive leadership that is a problem under Girard. Instead of the delegates demand an immediate vote on the future chairman without any compromised constellations, which was approved by a slight majority, these new circumstances massively complicate the search for a truly non-decisive party chairman. Sturgevald is more than convinced to remain in the race and claim the chairmanship for himself, but his most promising competitor from the initial Trump variant plan, the progressive trade unionist Joseph Jews, announced his withdrawal of his bid soon after. <laughs> well aware he wouldn't have a chance against Sturgevald on his own due to his lacking care, charis care Charisma. This means that apart from Stegerwald, only Monin remained in the race, who is barely considered to have a high chance of winning due to his similarity to Gerard. Horrified by Stegerwald's strong standing against Monin, the conservative federal line of delegates from Bavaria, Alice Erlain and Luxembourg have made their move as well. They nominated Bavarian Finance Minister Fritz Schaffer, a young political fireman, P.S. Catholic and proud Bavarian with the rightest tendencies, and helped to appeal to traditional Hungarian and middle class oriented delegates at the conference. While it's true that Schaffer has a high winning chance than Monin, the fact now that that two conservative representatives of running against Sturgeval could play in the trade unionist hands. Who is still left in the field? The Tron variant proposal has been rejected. Amherst Sturgeval representing the trade unionist friendly with Schleicher now face off against Bavarian conservative Fritz Schaffer drafted at the last moment to represent the right wing of the party. Ah, I think I went with the wrong route again. I hope not. But I think I did. There's a coup in Siam. And the compromise chairman, the chairman elections are over, the votes been counted, and the results are shocking. The votes are almost equally split between the three candidates, with Sturgevald and Schaffer outpacing the moderate among you only by a few votes. The worst case scenario has occurred. Technically, such a result would mean that a second voting round needs to be conducted. However, that would likely result in more of a, than a controversial conf conductor, a direct confrontation between popular candidates, in which both sides have a very high chance of winning. The party board is firmly opposed to that, fearing that the head-to-head -head, uh, face-off between the two Highly influential wings of the party could tear his interim apart, especially as the regionalist tendencies play a very pronounced role in the competition. Thus, after lengthy negotiations and loud protests by the youngest delegation, Stagerwald, Schaffer, and Monin agreed on a not very glorious compromise solution, an altered version of the initial trivariant plan. Stagerwald will remain in charge of the parliamentary faction, while the party's chairmanship will be taken over by a shared leadership of moderates and federalist conservatives. This constellation weakens the trade unionist influence substantially to the delight of their opponents, but leaves Sturgevald's far-reaching power in the Reichstag unchecked. All in all, this can only mean one thing. Centrum will continue its unassertive and inconsistent course in the near future. How long can such a course last? The new chairman of the Centrum is Hugo Mongin, who is heading a compromise chancellorship that is unaligned. You will now be able to flag one less faction to protect it from conversion. That's fine. You don't get three, and I only get two, but I usually only need two. And it's well, whoever the uh, Democratic Union's choosing. So, come back over here. We're winning quite steadily. Move into that tile, make sure that their tanks can't move out. I think we're going to win against the Ming Gang Insurgency. You there. Man, our horses are fast. That horse zipped around that corner. Who's that? Oh, that's the Qing government's horses. Alright, this is what we're 
Oh, pause, pause. Uh, Romania nationalizes the oil field after the complete crash of the oil field land lease company managed in the Pilsetti oil fields in the Cronus government proceeded to nationalize the assets of the bankrupt corporation. There's another case of the Romanians breaking the Bucharest Treaty, but there's little we can do to stop them. Neither does the public care much about the issue. They think they can survive without Middle Europa, so be it. They get embargoed by Middle Europa. General strike in the Ruhr. The violence in Berlin during the May Day emboldened both the socialist movement and the Employers Association and sharpened the tensions between them. The Association of German Iron and Steel Industries Industrialists, the most influential employers organization in the Ruhr, chose a policy of confrontation with the working class, refusing negotiation with trade unions. Their worrying was that the future wage increases demanded by steel workers to cope with high inflation would make their productive uncomp uncompetitive and spell doom for the industry in the volatile economic environment. When the trade unions in the Ruhr, led by the free trade unions, but also involving their liberal and Christian counterparts, terminated the collective agreement to demand a 15 fa uh, fanging per hour incre wage increase, the industrialists responded with a lockout, trying to force the unionists to bend to their will. In a country already suffering from economic plight and societal tensions, this triggered a cascading effect. The unions across the nation, but especially in the Ruhr, declared their sympathy with the locked-out workers and joined the call for a general strike. Even several representatives in the Reichstag, most notably Max so wet switz spoke out in favor of the strikers and declared the lockout illegal over a million workers have joined the strike by the end of the week paralyzing industry across much of the country the right chancellor has a new challenge to face gain at negative 10 percent stability change in popularity of totalism syndicalism and radical syndicalism plus one percent economic decline and stagnation scores are increased by 250 points and in the eastern line land we end rural comp which gains which grants resource gain efficiency negative 75 percent Local manpower and max factories in the state, negative 20%, and local construction feed, negative 75%, may not be targeted by any industrial project decisions, and this activates Michigan es mission escalation of the rural comp. Can't they see we are already suffering enough? So now it's up to 350 stagnation and 325 economic decline. Um, and now we have this. The rural comp, the tension in Germany since the Black Monday crisis, the suppression of the socialist movement, and the instability in the central government has sparked a general strike in the Ruhr, which threatens to expand to the entire nation if not contained. We must control the escalation of the uprising and find a way to suppress the strike, whether via negotiation or with force. For an authoritarian Reich Chancellor such as Kurt von Schleichler, the rural conflict also presents an opportunity. If he cannot control the Reichstag via parliamentary majority, he can subordinate it by gaining extraordinary powers to deal with the insurgency perhaps if the rural uprising is kept active not growing too strong or too weak until the end of the year such an opportunity can prevent itself uh, the rural uprising is measured in intensity representing the radicalism of the uprising the current intensity uprising is 50 of 100 and will be increased by 10 every 25 days so we can bring it down by 15 which i think we will do this time then we'll get done with this in seven days and we'll move over to the suppression of it. Yeah. So seven days on that. We'll come back over here. We should be done in Nanjing hopefully soon. I've been fighting a while down here. I've been, ho I've been hoping to get done with this war for a while, to be honest with you. A Lithuanian envoy, an envoy has arrived from Lithuania wishing to invite representatives from our government to negotiate a new trade agreement currently due to the Treaty of brest litvitsk and our subs subsequent, subsequent agreements. We have restricted Lithuanian trade from the Baltic Sea that goes either go through Memel, right here, or through Riga, up here. Uh, it now appears they wish to have un unrestricted access to the Baltic Sea, circumnavigating Memel and Riga. Uh, we can just agree or we shall keep the restrictions i'll just agree uh, i think that should help them especially gain a little bit of strength the market liberals are in charge you guys should win though hopefully keep up keep up the uh the work keep trying it paved country roads float this monarchy popularity see strengthen the interpartisan circle hmm probably should have done the uh, 
so it should have done that. Ah, it doesn't matter. Uh, up here, you guys are oh, still doing that. You guys have to start doing this, I guess. And the Russians still don't hate us. And Finland is... I guess... Uh, I guess nothing's happened right now in Finland, so they should be. Oh, they have Mountain Descent, Black Monday, Grain Issue, Labor Strikes. Okay. All right. Well, with that, I'm going to end episode two. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye.